Hello guys, welcome to the channel. I'm currently in the middle of a house move, so although I've got three builds which are almost finished, none of them are quite ready for a video yet. So I'm going to give you a quick inbox preview today of this BR52 locomotive from Trumpeter. As you might be able to guess from the box, this is in 135th scale, which is great for me because of course my stash is full of 135th scale models, um, figures, vehicles, etc. Before I begin, I am aware that there are quite a few accuracy issues with this uh, kit. I'm not too sure of them because I'm not a uh, train expert. So looking around the box, we have this rather nice uh, splinter camo scheme on the side of some kind of field grey and a sort of a stone or yellow colour. That looks quite interesting. It's a fairly old kit from Trumpeter, although I think it may have been recently re-released. I bought mine a few years ago in Singapore, and that's not the price I paid for it on the edge of the box there. And around the other end of the box, we have the alternative scheme, which is this uh, black and red scheme, which I think is a post-war scheme, but I could be wrong. So let's look inside the box. We've got this strange um, vinyl piece at the top here, which we'll come back to later. As you can see, the box is rammed with plastic. Uh, this sprue here gives you a good indication of the length of the loco itself, that bottom piece down there. So that's what, that's over 30 centimetres, over 12 inches, just for the engine part without the, um, without the tender. Looks like some roof and cab pieces there. We'll look at these in a bit more detail shortly. Here we've got the uh, boiler pieces. This looks like the pieces from the tender, and you can see there, again, from that bottom piece, that side piece, that the tender is going to be no small uh, model on its own. A couple of platform pieces there, I'm guessing possibly again for the tender, but I'm not quite sure at the moment. These pieces here in the protective wrapping are the sleepers. And then although we've got two big boxes here, we've also got a load more sprues here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, what have we got down here? Six, seven, eight. Eight more sprues there with lots of uh, pieces on those. I wasn't quite sure what was in this box. Uh, when I opened it, it turned out not to be very much at all. That's rather a large box for a couple of clear parts and a tiny fret of uh, photo etch parts. But that does seem to be correct. There doesn't seem to be anything else that should go in there. And of course a little decal sheet there as well. Bit, bit overkill there, especially since that clear part um, still doesn't quite fit into that box. Finally, this big black box here, the rail bed. I'm quite familiar with these. Um, I built them before with my Trumpeter um, Leopold, which was before I had this channel and they're very similar to the 172nd scale Hobby Boss uh, pieces of the same, same type. Okay, let's take a closer look and let's start with that rail bed. So you can see the pieces here have a sort of, um, it's a bit like the old style Skeletrix track on them. They've got a little um, a groove and a hook on each end. And obviously you will glue them together but you can just also clip them together. And you can see as I'm doing this here that I've made the uh, instant uh, schoolboy error there. I've connected them the wrong way around so I've got that double width gap there in the middle which is not correct. So that needs to be popped off and rotated. And then that's correct there. You'll notice that these um, rail beds here have this kind of smooth edge on them for like a display platform. That's nice but it does also mean that if you want to put this in part of a diorama you're going to have to do um, probably some cutting to remove that. We do have the end pieces there as well, which make the end of that display base. So that's two pieces. There are two more pieces in this bag, plus another bag full of them. So it's going to be quite a long model, as you might imagine. If we cut back to those protected pieces we saw earlier, as you can see, those were the sleeper pieces. They have long runs here that you remove from the sprue and then just push up from below through the, um, the rail bed. To be honest, if I was making a diorama base, I would be quite tempted just to put the sleepers directly onto the, the terrain and then fill the gaps around them with uh, stones 
and not use the, um, the uh, rail bed pieces. The other advantage of that, of course, is that if I put the sleepers directly on the terrain, I could introduce a little bit of a curve to the railway line, which, um, for what I've got in mind, um, would be quite uh, useful. And again, there you can see each of those uh, rails is over uh, 12 inches, 30 centimeters, and this one here is another uh, 19 centimeters. So that's a good long um, piece. Moving to the next sprue, which is uh, the boiler piece. And these pieces here which go at the front of the boiler, um, I'm not quite sure what the technical name for those is. And then some kind of, I don't know, is that a, um, a support for something by the looks of it there? I'm not quite sure what that is. The moulding looks very nice on these. We can, you can see we've got some decent rivet detail down here. A couple of um, connection points I think for some extra pieces here. Now I don't know enough about the BR52 to say how accurate this is to the, uh, the real loco but um, I like the look of it myself. No detail on the inside, but of course you're not going to see um, inside of that. Some nice strong uh, guiding pins there to help alignment of those two pieces. Moving on, and the next sprue has lots of pieces here for the cab. So you can see we've got what looks like a sort of control panel piece up there at the top. Clearly some cab sidewalls on the top right there, the roof on the bottom, and the front and back I think in the bottom right. If we zoom in, we can see you've got some nice wood texture there, if I just tilt the piece slightly, hopefully you can see that. This is presumably the floor of the cab, it's got a nice sort of wood grain effect there. We've got the, uh, the roof of the cab there, a little bit of flash on that, uh, that hole there, although that will be covered and a bit more flash on that, uh, that edge which we'll just need uh, sanding down or cutting away. I did notice a few of the reviewers say there's not a lot of detail in the cab in terms of the, the instruments and the controls and so on. You can get a photo etch set uh, here as you can see um, to detail that up, but I'm just not quite sure how much that will be able to see. We do only have the small windows at the side and of course the tender will block the view from the rear. A few more sort of gauges and controls and things like that there, scattered around this uh, sprue. Almost certainly painting those before adding them to the cab would be the best approach for those. The next sprue looks like it is basically parts of the uh, underside of the engine. And again that long piece there that, which defines our length of our engine. A few sort of cylinders here, I don't know what these do to be quite honest. Um, they seem to go underneath the, um, the boiler, the firebox, and a few supporting pieces uh, and similar items. This sprue contains what we need, or some of the pieces we'll need for the tender. We've got this textured coal piece on the right hand side, the sides for that there on the left, and of course the under pieces there. I believe if I'm correct, the tender also holds water and this piece here, this sprue here, tells us the, uh, the length of the, that, uh, that overall tender. Looking at the next sprue, I'm not going to show you every single sprue, but uh, just some of the ones that stand out a bit more. We've got a few sort of um, walkways, platforms here, and these at the bottom, um, these are the, um, the side rods, the coupling rods, I think, aren't they? I do believe that they're not actually correct. As in, if they were in a straight line like that, I don't think the train could move. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Got a nice little um, anti-slip uh, texture on these pieces here. And because it's so cold in my garage, we've got some condensation here on the lens, which is just slightly blurring this image. Sorry, I didn't realise that until, uh, until editing, guys. Sorry about that. I did want to show you this sprue here, though because it's got these nice, um, I think these are steam deflectors, these big pieces here on the left hand side that go at the front of the uh, engine. Now I always thought they were metal and I could have sworn that I saw a photo etch set to replace these, but if we zoom in we can see we've got a sort of um, wooden texture there. And if we look on the other side, the texture's there as well. No um, ejector pin marks anywhere on that piece. So really happy with that, that's going to look very nice. Maybe a good opportunity there for some chipping as the paint's worn away from the wood. And finally, let's look at this sprue here. Here we can see one of the wheels. I 
don't think that's flash in the corners. That's that's actually deliberate um, where those spokes meet the uh, wheel frame. On the other side, we do have a couple of um, eject pin marks there. Although I think realistically, in general, they won't be seen. Although it's possible they'll be seen uh, for the idea that I have. And finally, as I said, let's come back to this strange um, black piece here. Very well protected here on its individual piece of card. This is a sort of um, um, vinyl material. It reminds me of the hoses that Tamiya give in their F1 kits, or they used to. Very, very flexible. I'll show you in the instructions in a minute where this uh, goes. This is actually two pieces, two sides. But these are cables, wires, pipes that come down the side of the boiler. So talking about, let's have a quick look at the instructions. Nice picture on the front there of that splinter camo scheme. Then the first two pages are a sprue map. I don't actually remember seeing part road part C there. I remember seeing the smaller ones, I showed you them part B. But I don't remember seeing part C. Hmm. We do have some not used parts there, some unused parts there, which uh, would seem odd to me. I don't think there's been any variants of this kit being built, being produced. We have here in the first step then, as I expected, uh, making the road bed. Of course the advantage of having those sleepers separately is that you can paint them separately as well. And then you squeeze those rails in there. It's always difficult on these, if you paint the rails first, it tends to be that as you slide them into place, that, that process scrapes the paint off. Um, which is a bit annoying, but anyway, such is life. Then we move on to assembling the underside of the uh, engine. So the A, B and C in the angled brackets there indicate other components that are made. Quite a good amount of detail here on the underside. And it's nice that they do things like uh, they tell you the flat buffer and the globe buffer. Quite a few loco kits don't do that, they just indicate it visually, but it's not always 100% clear. Then it looks like we're building up here the, um, the top side. So these will be the supports for the boiler and the firebox. And all the sort of, um, we've got a few sort of cylinders and things underneath here. Um, that are obviously part of making this steam engine work. And over the page and we're adding are those the pistons? I'm making two of them there on the left and then adding them. I think those are the pistons. And then over to the cab. So you can see quite a few controls there in the cab. And as we put it together, we've only got those two side windows to view the detail. That lovely, I was right about that. That's the textured floor there that I pointed out earlier, um, the wooden floor. More details there, getting the glass pieces in. I'll try to lie, we have a window and we have a door, so maybe there's a possibility of leaving a door off or open, at least. The rear of the cab has this circular entrance that will connect to the tender, so we're not going to get any light through there to see the detail. And there, as we put the roof of the cab on, we've also got a solid part there closing that gap up. Over the page, they were putting the boiler firebox together and connecting that to the cab. So we're starting to look like a loco at this point. And then we make the upper side and the underside. And now we've really got something that looks uh, like it should do. Although notice we're only on step 12 here and we're not actually halfway through the instructions yet. There's still a lot of detail to go on the underside of this. There's the staple, so there's the middle of the booklet now. Um, we're only halfway. On this page here we add that vinyl piece that I showed you. It obviously connects there at the top of the boiler and has those individual arms dangling down for now. I'm assuming they will connect somewhere later on. 
I imagine a lot of these pieces will require a lot of pre-painting because there's no way you're going to get an airbrush and even a paintbrush behind a lot of these pieces once they're mounted. Step 17 has us adding the wheels. And still going on to that over the other side with some more details there. Those vinyl parts still look like they're dangling down. There's something there that we're not supposed to cement next to the, um, the coupling rods. I'm not quite sure why because none of the, uh, the wheels or the rods work on this model. So I'm not quite sure why they said don't, uh, don't cement them. Some final details on step 21, 22 and 23. It's funny how there's so few things added on some of these steps, whereas the earlier steps were absolutely uh, rammed with parts being added. We're still not finished with the engine yet. This makes me happy because one of my possibilities for uh, modeling this is to have the train, maybe not upside down, but on its side, having slid off the rails, perhaps due to sabotage. So I'm quite happy there's a lot of um, underside detail there because that's going to help me if I, if I decide to do that. There we're adding those uh, steam deflectors. And then here we are, we move on to the tender. A fairly straightforward build in a similar kind of order. So we've got four pairs of wheels. We build up that underside as a box, as you'd imagine. A simple box here for the coal. And then another box that sort of goes on top of that that provides the access for the coal, for loading coal. And then just some detail parts on it. So we've got this uh, circular connector here, which will go to the back of the cab. And a bit like the engine itself, a few more details on the underside. And with that step done, we're complete with the model. So let's take a quick look at the painting schemes. We'll get two of those. We've got this lovely uh, splinter version down here. If I did one of these two, it would be this one. Although I don't believe I've seen any photographic evidence for one of these. The other scheme, the black and the red, is a post-war um, scheme, I believe. I'm not really a fan of that, uh, so I won't be doing that one. In terms of decals, you can see we've got the, uh, the German Eagle on the door and a um, serial number, a different one for each scheme. And also a serial number on the front and the back as well. So guys, there we have it. That was my quick preview of Trumpeter's 135th scale BR32 locomotive. Now I'm moving into a bigger place and I'll actually have a, a modeling room that's uh, indoors and uh, has room to swing the proverbial cat. I, I hope to make this model fairly soon and I'll actually have somewhere to store it hopefully as well to display it once it's finished. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I've got, I'm gonna show you some pictures of some kits that I've got from my stash that I'm thinking might go uh, with this. And you can tell me in the comments below what you think about that and how they might work together. Now, first things first, I do have and have built this uh, Trumpeter 135th scale Leopold. Uh, you won't have seen it on this channel because I built it a long time ago before I had my channel. And in fact, uh, although it's boxed up at the moment, it's been boxed up since I moved from Malaysia, I was thinking recently of taking a look at it once I unbox it and possibly going back and uh, improving it because I know that I wouldn't have done a particularly good job on it. I think this was the first model that I actually used my airbrush on. Um, so it'd be interesting. Of course, that depends how it survived because these rails and so on here could easily have uh, been destroyed in the shipping process. So potentially I could have the train pulling that. 
but that's a that's an outside opportunity outside chance the other thing i need to remember of course is that we want this uh, engine to be pulling something i do have one of these trumpeter high-sided wagons and you might remember in the past i've also built this uh, flatbed rail wagon which i had my Sturm Tiger on so one idea I was thinking of is having this train partially derailed and then using this mini art set of wounded soldiers and this dragon set of medical troops and the diorama could be the sort of uh, the aftermath of this maybe an ambulance that's pulled up on a road nearby and is sort of uh, dealing with casualties the only issue I have with that is I don't really have any um, rolling stock that the troops could have travelled in because presumably they wouldn't be travelling in those high-sided but open-top wagons. I do actually have a photo of that happening but this was German soldiers returning home at the end of the war although again that could be a possibility though. So I could go with the flatbed option and I'd have to buy a couple of flatbed um, wagons perhaps put a tank or two on there or what I could even do is use my V2 rocket, which I haven't built yet. This does have the um, the transporter vehicle with it, but I could just use the rocket, perhaps, on the, the wagon. Equally, I really liked this photo that I saw online, but look at this high-sided wagon here with um, German tank parts in it, just sort of randomly thrown in it. We've got like a, a panther turret in there and other bits and pieces. That would be kind of cool. Maybe even something like a... Um, kind of like a last ditch kind of effort where they're just transporting some troops, they're transporting some vehicle parts, basically everything they can just thrown on a train. So lots and lots of possible ideas there. I am really looking forward to building this kit um, and seeing where it sort of takes me and, and what ideas I can come up with. It might be that when I unpack my stash I remember a couple of models or a couple of kits that also would go with this nicely as well. So. Uh, we'll see what happens closer to the time. But if you do have any comments or ideas, please do feel free to leave them below. One place where I always have lots of interesting discussions with people about models and future ideas is my Patreon page. If you join Patreon, you get access to some behind the scenes work in progress photos. And often get a sneak preview of finished models as well before the videos go up as well as a chance to discuss things with uh, like-minded uh, modelers. So if joining Patreon or YouTube as a member sounds like something you'd like to do, you can find a link in the description below. And all that remains is for me to say thank you very much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, have fun modeling.